These are the different ways to code, analyze, and interpret Likert scale data using SPSS. As you can see, if we go to this icon here and I click, you see that uh, the codes uh, start appearing instead of the values. For example, this agree code class two, etc. So this is what we call a code book. If we want to generate a code book, we need to go to uh, analyze and then reports and then code book. And I can just uh, pick all the variables that are, uh, let's say, in the questionnaire, move them to the code book. Here in the output, I could just choose what I want to see in the uh, code book, the position, the label, the type, the format, the measurement level, ordinal interval ratio, or the role, the value labels, etc. And then I click OK, and here is a code book, as you can see. Uh, so uh, you can just find one table that is inclusive. It contains uh, the variables or the questions, and then their position, their label, their type, their format, their measurement level, the role and the valid values for example one strongly disagree and five strongly agree so this is the way the Likert scale should be coded it should be coded as one strongly disagree and five strongly agree because this number or these numbers are meaningful when it comes to the interpretation we could say the higher the mean score the more the respondents agree or the more satisfied the respondents are we usually take a baseline or threshold that is three and if it is below three, we say that most people disagree. If it is above uh, three, we say most people agree. And we can just convert this uh, variable that is uh, five point liquid scale into dichotomous variable. And to do this, we can just go to, uh, although we are in the output, we can just go to transform and then uh, recode into different or same variables. So in, in the same variable, here we just replace it, but into different variable, we will just create another, uh, let's say, uh, scale or another variable, like let's say IV1. We can move it here. We can just move a set of liquid scale items at once, not only one item. And I go here to all the new values. And I will just say, for example, range uh, from, uh, let's say, one to uh, three. This is, for example, this agreement. We code it as zero and we click add. And uh, anything through the highest, let's say from three to uh, uh, five or anything like that, we can just code it as one and we click add. And this is how we can just make this dichotomous variable. And we, we just uh, label it here, IV here, IV1 dichotomous. And then once we click change and click OK, what will happen is that a new variable will be created at the end of the variable uh, list here. And we can just uh, see that it is coded as 0 and 1. So those who disagree and those who agree. Uh, so here we can just give it again values. We can say 0 disagreement and then uh, 1 uh, agree. So this is how we can recode um, one liquid scale into two dichotomous, let's say, uh, value, ver values or variables. Anyways, so we have IV1. So this is one way. Uh, suppose that I want to, to, test, uh, to, comp to test the reliability and validity of this liquid scale. I go to analyze, then scale, then reliability analysis. I will just put these values all together here. And I put it, for example, as scale one. Okay, scale one. And click OK. And this is the reliability. The reliability here is 0.966, which is above the threshold level that is 0 0.70. This means that this uh, set of items is reliable. And hence, we can uh, combine them to form a composite score uh, variable. To form a composite score, again, we go to transform. And then we click uh, compute variable and here I go to S meaning statistical here the mean I move it above and I put for example here composite score and I will move each item and I put uh, just a comma after it and then I will continue till I finish for example the first letter scale which is the IV so once I finish, I click OK, and what will happen, a new variable will be created at the end. This is its log or syntax. And we, once you go here, we will find that there is a composite score of the IV1, for instance. 
the independent variable number one. Uh, suppose that I want to do correlation and regression, I will just continue, uh, uh, you know, creating the composite scores. So once I have different composite scores, I will just go to analyze, then correlate, then bivariate, then I will just put the two, let's say, uh, composite scores, for example, this one with this one. And then I can use sensitivity analysis by using both Pearson and Spearman correlation. So this is for the parametric uh, correlation. This is for the non-parametric. Just remember it by saying P uh, Pearson and uh, so the P here as in parametric. And here the test of significance. Suppose that my hypothesis uh, states that there is a positive relationship between IV1 and IV2 or IV1 and DV2. Uh, here, this is what we call a one-tailed, because here I know the direction of the hypothesis between these two, or the relationship between these two variables. Suppose I don't know, I don't know whether uh, there is a statistically significant positive or even negative correlation, I will just put it as two-tailed. Then, I, if I'm using SPSS version 27 and above, I can just uh, format it as uh, APA style by showing just only the lower triangle and clicking here. And then I click OK, even though I, if I want to include other statistics like the means and standard deviations in one analysis, I could just take this and click continue and click OK. And this is the correlation. You see the N here refers to the sample size. The mean here is the average. You see if it is three and above, this means that the majority of respondents are neutral. And this is standard deviation. This means like uh, minus plus uh, uh, difference with regard to the mean so there are some people who would have uh, plus one three meaning the agree so this will become four or minus one point three this means that the disagree this will become two point uh, something or uh, even one so here we have uh, this uh, descriptive statistics and using the mean and standard deviation sometimes we can use the median and the interquartile range especially if the data uh, has outliers or is not normally distributed sometimes but Likert scale most of the time is not normally distributed you see here the person correlation uh, this is statistically significant uh, strong very strong positive correlation which is 99.6 percent and it is significant at two tailed meaning that we don't know the direction of the hypothesis but it is significant at 0 0.001 uh, and then this, the n refers to the sample size this is for the person correlation for the sperman correlation uh, you see that the same results are found and this is sensitivity analysis and this is just used to give more let's say support to uh, your hypothesis by including both the parametric and non-parametric statistics at once uh, this is for uh, correlation suppose that i want to uh, test uh, curve linear uh, correlation or um, let's say partial correlations i can just go to analyze and then correlate and then i use partial correlations and then i could just uh, use for example uh, the relationship between iv and dv1 uh, with let's say controlling for um, this moderator let's say m1 and uh, i keep this as two tailed and one tailed uh, because i don't know the direction of the hypothesis i will just click ok so this is what we call partial correlations in which i controlled for another uh, intervening variable and you see here it's 37 uh, percent and still it is statistically significant uh, suppose that i want to run curve linear uh, correlation i go to analyze we have uh, regression and uh, curve uh, linear estimation so here i put the the dependent variable which is in this case this one here I put the IV in this case, this one here, and click uh, OK here. And the models I could just choose curve linear, logarithmic, inverse, quadratic, cubic, power, compound, S, logistic, growth, exponential. And then here I could just include constant in equation and plot models. Uh, display an over table if I wish. And then here I could just save the variables if I want. Uh, so again, you need to report what uh, models you have used and uh, uh, for the sake of, let's say, transparency and for the sake of replication, you need to state exactly what uh, model uh, you have used. I can just leave the explanation of all of these models in the description box to uh, read if you want. Click continue and OK. And here is the curve linear estimation. 
Uh, it's like regression to some extent here the ANOVA tells you that the model fits the data if this one is statistically significant meaning that it is below 0.001 the R and the R square this is correlation R uh, this standard coefficient here these, these are the regression coefficients that are um, statistically significant as you can see and uh, uh, actually for, for regression I would use it especially when there are uh, experiments true experiments because regressions are a little bit stronger and the predict cause and effect relationship that's why if you don't have a true experimental design regression may not be giving you accurate results especially in social uh, sciences and surveys like this you see so in experimental designs you could see for example if you eat uh, 2000 or 3000 calories per day this will have an impact on your body or mass index by, for example, 2% or 3%. And you take people and you do an experiment that is controlled for them. And these are for clinical trials, of course. But in social sciences, you may get a very strong positive uh, uh, impact, but still it may not be the real cause. So correlation does not imply causation as we say so anyways this is for the uh, correlation partial correlation and the curve linear color correlation uh, we saw how to transform variables by computing the mean score and how to recode them into different and same variables uh, what else uh, for the coding as we said the values should be coded from 1 to uh, 5 or 1 to 7 depending on the points of the liquid scale if we go to this icon you see what uh, was the last step that you did suppose that I want to go back to linear regression I will just click this one and I go directly to linear regression so it is just a short memory here uh, if I want to edit let's say the output of the space I can go to the data and then uh, if I want to let's say split the input of the data I will just go to data and then split into files and then I will pick uh, one variable to split the file into or I go to the data and then uh, split file and then organize outputs and we take for example a variable let's say gender male and female at birth this means that the output if we just click this and we rerun let's say uh, curve estimation what will happen is that the output will be divided by gender prefer not to say gender let's say males gender let's say female so each let's say gender will have the specific results of it and this is really good if you want to compare groups this is why we use this feature of split into uh, files um, if i want to remove it split into files or the other one that is called split uh, file here if i want to remove it i will just uh, remove this and analyze all cases do not create groups and click OK. So these are all the features I think that are really interesting when it comes to uh, liquid scale data analysis and visualization and interpretation. If you have questions or remarks, do not hesitate to post them below and see you soon. Bye for now.